the promise of them opening because I plant them you know something when you plant something and then you're just waiting to see it come it's that anticipation hello and welcome to Catherine's garden today we're going to share some thoughts of the garden and lilies These oriental lilies are definitely starting to unfold. Look at them. I like the pink on pink here. You see this? Look at the stamens, the pink color with the sun and patience, and even with the hosta leaves. This is beautiful. Uh, you know I have those white lilies but um, I don't have this pink and I really like these um, I think they're called muscadet and kativa um, lilies and um, I'm going to plant these lilies and they're so beautiful I just now have to think about where I'm going to plant them I really like this bed. The different shades of pink and red. Uh, it's really coming out pretty. And with the uh, hosta flowers too, just adding uh, just a special glow in this light. It's nice. This corner is, is very attractive. I need red in my garden because of all of the the green and it's uh, and it's a large space so that the um, the red the shades of red and pink and maroon um, just help to um, accentuate the bed I mean it's it's great in the spring to have all of that green but right now in with the heat and the sun, you know, you want a, a more bright, tropical, um, full experience in the garden. And so the perennials and the annuals coming together with the shrubs just help to um, expose the beauty of the garden. Just helps to bring out all of the, the color and the life in the garden. So here in this bed, it's, it's just a really beautiful um, way that this is happening. Um, I love this fern here at the corner. And we have these impatience here. The Cleome, I, I like that here. And I'm assuming that the Cleome is going to grow and uh, just continue to spike up and, and produce flowers. Now here I have this daylily and I can tell you it is a beautiful daylily. I am excited about it coming and opening up but even in this form it looks very pretty and it it's, um, has that tinge of red in it so that it fits in very well with this whole area. Color is so important in the garden. And um, it's amazing how these hostile flowers are holding up so well here. But I like the fact that they are not as um, purple or lavender as the other ones but rather have a more white tinge to it which is good 
uh, it, it blends in nice with the pinky white and creamy colors of um, the rest of the plants I am so excited about this oriental lily I'm going to put the name of it um, in the description and also um, tell you what it is. I, I saved the information so I have it for you. <laughs> and the bee bomb is doing very well. This morning I saw a hummingbird helping itself to the nectar. So that is really a good thing to plant in one's garden, the bee balm. It will attract the hummingbirds. I think this is just a beautiful picture here. That's why I'm kind of sitting on this a little bit because it just looks so pretty. It's early in the morning. It's about 7.30 right now. And um, you can hear the birds. There's a little light traffic. You can hear the planes above. But right here, this moment in the garden, it's very still and nice. You can meditate a little bit. You can meditate on the beauty of the garden. What I'm excited for are these. These oriental lilies that will open up shortly. The promise of them opening. Because I plant them, you know, something when you plant something and then you're just waiting to see it come. It's that anticipation, you know, and it, it's important to develop patience in our lives. And the garden helps you to do just that. It helps you to develop patience. And the other thing that I find that's very powerful about the garden is the garden requires that you have focus too. You know, um, while I'm here, and especially doing this, these videos, it requires that I'm observant and that I'm focused. And the more focused and observant that I am, the more beauty is revealed to me. The more that I can see. And, um, and that I'm looking for something. I'm looking for the blessing of the garden. And that helps with life, too. I think this whole process of gardening helps one to deal with life. That you can plan, set your goals, work it, work the plan, and then you receive the harvest. So, like, for example, I, I set a plan to create this border and to plant these plants right then I went out I bought them I placed them in and I worked the garden weeding pulling making sure that everything's going well and now this is my harvest the harvest of the flowers I'm getting the results of what I put in, the effort that I put in to the garden. Now, yes, there are other factors. Um, there are times when you run into pests and other negative things that can um, steal your harvest and your joy, but that's when you have to uh, be flexible, you know, and, and continue to move forward within uh, your garden because maybe that mistake could end up being your blessing yeah it sounds funny huh but it's true look at this mm -hmm. that's so pretty 
for this moment in time. Wow. I'm impressed with this garden. Not just because it's my garden, but because of the way that um, it's come about and it's coming together. Now there are things, as I said, that I've had disappointments. Um, for example, my hydrangea flowers, where are they? They haven't shown up in the abundance that I anticipated. But I could either stay in that spirit of, well, where's my hydrangeas? How come they didn't show up? Oh, my garden is not as spectacular as I want it to be. And I had all these plans for that. Or I can stop and say, no, I'm going to look at the, the immediate present. What is before me? I'm going to enjoy this moment, this, these flowers, what's here, what's present. Even looking at this, look at this. I just love how the flowers of the hosta are just right above the leaves. And it almost looks like to me, like winged beautiful butterflies flying above. I know I'm being dramatic. But that's how I feel. That's what I see. And then, of course, the fruiting of this Asian pear tree. I am just so amazed at this. Each day, they just look a little bit larger, which I'm glad because they're supposed to grow. But, you know, it's just amazing. As I said, we determine what we see. Is the cup half empty or is the cup half full? That's what it is. Is the cup half empty or is the cup half full? And for me right now, my cup is running over. It is running over with what I see this moment, for this moment in time, my cup is running over with joy, 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 joy. I am just amazed at the size of the leaves of these coleus. I didn't think it was going to be this large. And they have shown up. And just look at this. You see my apples? Now that in itself is a miracle. You know how my apple tree and my peach tree and even these pear trees, uh, this pear tree came about? I saw some of my YouTube, um, my the other YouTube channels, the other YouTube um, gardeners, uh, and I saw their gardens and I saw what they were able to do, and it inspired me to say, yeah, you can come out of your comfort and what you know to do and try something new in your garden, add to your garden. And this whole talk of a food forest just inspired me to uh, plant the plums and plant the pears and plant the apples and to put it in my garden. There's such an inspiration and it's about our attitude.
Do we have that can-do attitude? Or are we going to have the, oh, woe is me attitude? And it's almost like, because I had that desire, um, and I searched out the plum, I went, actually, oh, I went to the, um, to the garden center, and I never observed that they had fruit trees at that garden center. But because it was in my mind and in my thoughts, um, I was able now to see the plum trees, see the fruit trees, because I was thinking about it. And it's important, whatever you're thinking of or planning, to meditate on it, and it will appear before you. Your desires will come, will be fulfilled. Yeah. We attract what we think about. Whatever you dwell on, that's what you're going to attract. It does work. And the garden is almost a, um, is a fulfillment or an example of that happening. My tomatoes are coming up. Here's my other plum tree. I remember when I used to watch Martha Stewart garden show on HGTV when they used to show a lot of gardening. It was really homes and garden TV. And uh, she had planted some nasturtiums on her wall and they trailed down she was so excited about that and she said i just can't wait to see the nasturtium flowers trailing down the side of my wall here and she was doing a little test to see um, how well they could grow and so this reminds me of that video by the way i am getting watermelon um, shoots or formations here in the front um, but with this nasturtium so this is so beautiful to see this actually happening that like Martha Stewart I can also plant nasturtiums and have them trail down the side of my um, it's not a wall but you know down the side aren't they pretty I am going to pull them out because they're getting these little black things and I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to do some research. But then in amongst this is my watermelon patch too and the peppers. And I really want the watermelon to grow. I've seen the humming bees though loving this. So for a little while. I'm going to let this stay the way it is, but I'm capturing it now so that I can remember that like Martha Stewart, I too have my own nasturtiums coming down and trailing on the wall. Like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Yes, I am so glad and happy to share my garden with you. Be blessed. Bye.